We're going to use Burp Suite's sequencer tool to look at predictability and randomness of session tokens. So our environment is a virtual box host only network. We have Samurai Web Testing Framework running as one virtual machine and a Windows box running as another virtual machine. Matilda is loaded on the Windows box and the firewall allows connections through port 80. So we're going to test from the Samurai virtual machine. And the first thing we need to do is get some sessions generated so that we can start to capture them. The sessions are created when the web browser does not send a valid session to the web server. The web server assumes that no session has been created for that browser and issues a set cookie with a new session. So one of the ways you can clear your sessions to get a new session ID is to clear all your cookies. We'll use Burp Suite to intercept the request. Go ahead and make the request and look at Burp Suite. We can see the request trapped in here in Burp Suite and there's no cookie header, so no cookie is being sent onto the server. We'll forward this request to the web server and wait for the response to come back. When the response returns, there should be a set cookie header in the response. Here's the response and here is the set cookie header with a new session ID. So we forward this to the web browser and now the web browser has a valid session. And one of the ways that we can simulate this is to make another request. This time we'll see that the cookie is in the request because the browser automatically sends it as long as the domain protocol and port matches. But we'll simply delete the cookie out. We'll forward this onto the web server and the web server will see that we don't have a cookie in a valid request and it should issue another set cookie to replace the session that's missing. And here's the set cookie ID. Forward this on. The Burp Suite sequencer does something similar to this repeatedly to capture the sessions over and over. So one of the things we need to tell the sequencer is what, which one of the IDs in the header is the session. So let's go ahead and generate a request again. Go back to Burp Suite and delete the cookie. And then we're going to right click and say send to sequencer. We'll forward it onto the web server. The web server should see that the cookie's missing and issue a new set cookie with a new valid session. When the comes back, the sequencer tab blinks red and we can see that the cookie field is already highlighted. So now we have a way of loading up the sequencer with a valid session ID and then the sequencer can start capturing based on this information. So it automatically starts with five threads. You can add more or less depending on the web server. And it's a good idea to go ahead and turn the interception off on the proxy. So we release that request that was trapped. We'll wait while the session IDs are captured. And the counter up in the top left corner will show how many sessions have been captured up to this point. This process takes a long time, so we'll pause the video and wait for us to get about 120 to 150 sessions. With 115 tokens and counting being captured, the Analyze Now button has been enabled. This button is enabled after about 100 tokens are captured. It's best to allow about 200 to 500 tokens to be captured, though, for the best analysis. Go ahead and hit Analyze Now, and then Burp Suite Sequencer will produce a summary and give us the effective entropy. It's rated at about 97 bits. This is a little low, but probably would have been better if we'd captured more tokens. We really want an effective entropy to be about 128 bits if possible. The effective entropy is the amount of actual information that is contained in a token. In other words, it's a measure of its randomness or non-predictability. So a token length of 26 produced an entropy of about 97. Character level analysis shows that the histogram is very flat, and this is good. There is a tendency for character number 25, which is the 26 character, the letter Z, to be prevalent a little bit more than it should, but overall, it's a very nice flat histogram. The PHP session has good randomness and decent non-predictability.